thank you so much for joining me. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is introducing something called Le Chatelier's Principle. Now, Le Chatelier talked about altering or, or stressing an equilibrium. So you've got a system, it's achieved equilibrium, and we're going to stress that equilibrium. We can stress that equilibrium by changing the, the moles or molarity or partial pressures of reactants or products. We can change the temperature. We can add inert gases. We can think about maybe adding a catalyst. Um, all, all sorts of things that can stress the equilibrium. Well, much like in life, when things change in your life, for a lot of people, those changes cause a lot of stress. And what we will do is we're going to shift or readjust our lives to account for that stress, to get back our personal equilibrium, so to speak. And so that's what we're going to be talking about in this uh, video series, stressing equilibrium. And our answers are always going to be in terms of what happens, how does the system shift or readjust to get back to an equilibrium system. So let's start with the first one. If we increase the partial pressure of SO2. So Kp would be equal to the partial pressure of SO3 squared over the partial pressure of SO2 squared times the partial pressure of O2. Okay. Now if we increase this, we are increasing the number of moles of a reactant present. That means our rate forward is going to change. Rate forward is no longer equal to rate reverse and to be at equilibrium those have to be equal so my rate forward is going to uh, increase and happen preferentially until those re uh, rates are equal so in other words if my rate forward is increased I'm going to consume to get back to equilibrium I'm going to consume reactant and I'm going to form product. So I'm going to increase react, excuse me, I'm going to increase, uh, Dina, decrease reactants and increase products. So that's one way of thinking about it. The other way is in terms of Q. If I increase my denominator, Q has, K has become Q. So if you increase a denominator, I'm going to have a decreased Q relative to that K. So Q is greater than K, that means I'm going to shift to form product. If you set it up with K on the left, you notice that the little point of your arrow points in the direction of your shift. Now, most common misconception is that K changes. No, once equilibrium is reestablished, it is the same constant K value molarities, partial pressures, do not change K. The only thing that changes the value of K is your temperature. Now, a simple way of thinking of this is if you add, you have to subtract. So if you added reactant in order to get back, you have to consume or subtract reactant. Okay, let's talk about the next one. In this next one, we've got the partial pressure of oxygen decreasing. And what that's going to do is I'm going to have fewer collisions amongst my reactants, so my rate forward is going to decrease. So my rate reverse is greater than my rate forward. Okay, so in terms of rates, that's going to tell you that we're going to have a preferential shift in the reverse direction. So we're going to form reactant, we're going to consume or decrease our product to reestablish equilibrium. If Kp, in terms of Kp, you have the partial pressure of SO3 squared, partial pressure of SO2 squared, times partial pressure of O2 squared, we are 
decreasing the denominator. So that means we have a Q that is increased now relative to our K. Um, so Q is too big. If Q is too big, you can think of it as having too much product, and we're going to shift to form reactant and consume product. And again, there's no change in K because we didn't change the temperature. All right. So now let's take a look at some other changes. Oh, one way to think of this, sorry about that. If you remove, you replace. So I removed a reactant, so it's going to shift to replace or increase that reactant and therefore decrease your product. So if you add, you subtract. If you remove, you replace. If you're in my class, you might want to ask me about the pencil trick in class. I'm not going to show it on the video because of time, but you can ask me in class about that. So let's try another one. This time I've increased my product. So that means I have more collisions amongst products, so my rate reverse will increase. So that means my rate reverse is greater than my rate forward, so the reaction is going to preferentially proceed to form reactant and consume product. So I'm going to increase reactant and decrease product to achieve equilibrium. In terms of Q, I have increased relative, I've increased my products, so Q is now greater than K. I no longer have K. I have a Q system that is got a value greater than K. If Q is too big, you preferentially shift to form reactant. And again, no change in K because we didn't change the temperature. So remember, if you add, you subtract to get back to equilibrium. Now, in terms of total pressures being decreased, that means volume is increased. I'm not going to talk about this as much in terms of pressures that, oh man, it gets a little tricky with that one. And so I'm going to focus on Q and the answer that most uh, classes that are freshman level college chemistry are going to accept. So I have a decreased in pressure. If you think about it in life, if you have, you know, let fewer pressures on your life, maybe you're getting a little bored, what you're going to do is you're going to want to add activities. In this case, and a decrease in pressure means I want to add moles of gas. So a decrease in pressure shifts to the side that has more moles of gas. In our example, more moles of gas are reactant, so we're going to form reactant and we're going to consume product. We've decreased pressure. We want to increase pressure in response. A way to increase pressure in response is to increase moles of gas. No change in K. All right. Now, I do want to talk about this in terms of Q, though, and because I think that's very important for certainly AP chemistry, if not IB and college chemistry. So in our case, remember, K is equal to the partial pressure of SO3 squared. I'll do this quickly. If not a little sloppy, make sure I write down the right species. Okay, so... In this case, I have the total pressure is decreased. My volume is increased. What that means is all of my partial pressures decrease and my molarity decreases because volume's in the denominator of molarity. Okay? And my molarity is increased. Sorry, wrote that backwards. Molarity is increased, or volume is increased, so my molarity decreases. So let's take a look. That's going to decrease that's going to decrease, and that's going to decrease. But do you notice, overall, I have a dec more of a decrease in my denominator. So my Q increases 
relative to k. Right? If you decrease a denominator, you increase a value. So I get an increase in q relative to k. That means I'm going to consume product and I'm going to form reactant. All right, let's take a look at some more of these. Hopefully it gets a little repetitive. Temperature's a little trickier. Okay, I don't talk about Q as much with temperature, okay? Um, but we can, we'll take a look at that and see if it helps you. All right, this was an exothermic direction. This was plus heat as a product. So in the forward direction, this is exo. In the reverse direction, this is endo. Okay? An increase in T favors your endothermic. Here's the deal. Rate forward increases. Rate reverse increases. So both rates increase, but it favors the endo direction. So in our case, our reactants are going to increase or be formed. Products are going to decrease or be consumed. Now the key here is what happens to K. So if I'm going to form reactant and consume product, K this time is actually going to change. And my new K is going to end up being, right, I'm going to have, I'm going to have more reactants, so my new K is going to be less than my old K. This is really important to wrap your mind around. If the temperature is decreased, a decrease in temperature favors the exo direction. So if you decrease your temperature, you favor the exo direction. Well, in our case, the exo direction, not always, but in our case, the exo direction is forward. So we're going to favor that forward direction. So that means I'm going to form product, I'm going to consume reactant. So if I've increased my numerator and decreased my denominator, both of these mean I'm going to have a new K. Whoops, that's a W. You can't tell because that was sloppy. We're going to have a new K that is greater than our old K. Okay, We've actually changed K. Typically, AP in the past has accepted because it's endo, you know, and because it's an exothermic, an increase in temperature sh will shift to the reactant side. Because it's an um, exothermic, a decrease in temperature will shift to the product side. Um, but more and more, they want to know about rates and cues. Okay, so you want to make sure that you work with those a bit. So now let's take a look at these next ones. Argon is added at a constant volume, okay? So argon is added at a constant volume. Um, in this case, we have no effect because we don't change the partial pressures, the relative partial pressures of our gases. This inert gas does not change anything. And I want to jump down to catalyst because this is true of a catalyst as well. Now, a catalyst added at the beginning will help you reach equilibrium sooner, but it does not stress an equilibrium. It increases my rate forward. It increases my rate reverse. So I get to equilibrium sooner but a catalyst does not stress the equilibrium. Okay, now helium added at a constant pressure is a little bit trickier. So if we have a constant P and a constant T, if we increase our moles, we have to have a flexible container and we will have an increase in volume. An increase in volume means a decrease in our molarity and a decrease in our partial pressures. Now remember with our example, we decreased our denominator preferentially over 
our numerator. So if a denominator is increased, that means q became greater than k. That means I have too much product, so I need to consume, it's an n, consume product and form reactant. So this will shift to the reactant side to form reactant, and there's no change here. Now a common question that you're going to see, especially if you're an IB, um, so pay close attention, if I want to make lots of product, do I want to do this at a high temperature or low temperature? Okay, well it's exothermic in the forward and endothermic in the reverse. And remember, high temperatures favor the endo direction, low temperatures favor the exo direction. If I want to make product, that's the exo direction for this reaction. So I want to do this at a low temperature. I want to continually cool my reaction vessel. Um, in this case, my moles of gas of reactant were greater than my moles of gas of my product. Okay, so high pressures favor the side with fewer, high P favors the side with fewer moles of gas, only count gas. Low pressures favor the side with more moles of gas. So in this case, I want to go to the side with fewer moles of gas, which is my products, which means I want to do this at relatively high pressures. So low temperatures, high pressures. Okay, thanks so much for joining me. For my kiddos, this is signing off. Good luck with chemistry.